I feel like dumb it. with these headphones on without you guys wearing headphones. You good? Oh, I'm, I have headphones. Oh, you have headphones. Just, oh. Yeah, oh, we're, we're just I usually have them. those. I don't know what the heck I did with mine. This is all I had. So this I think is what you I'm look super on. pro. Oh, you're That's right. so sweet. You look like a podcaster. <laughs> you do. I got on a, a sales should. call and they were like, are you about to play us a song on the piano? And I was like, <laughs> is this the first time you've ever seen a microphone? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'd be like, yes. And then I'm like, take it away, Charlie. I have a piano right here. Drop the curtain. That's oh. hilarious. Me... I thought it, I was like, um, I could play some music off my if phone. Only. I don't know. Oh, I, I should... still want to see your Irish dance. Yes. And you never will. <laughs> Because I lived in a time before documentation. Oh. I was going to say internet. before exploitation of children, mm-hmm. but then I had yeah. to remember that's mm-hmm. not true. We just didn't put it on the internet back and then. And we didn't have the right. interwebs. Thank God. Thank I'd like God to limit the, the amount of pictures of me in a dress available to the oh, general gosh. public. And so. Well, my parents <laughs> would not have taken pictures anyways. My parents were like... My parents were so old school. They were immigrants. And my dad, like, he would take a picture at an event. And it better have worked out because that was the one picture. <laughs> one picture. <laughs> That's it. Because <laughs> film cost shit, remember? Like, right. you had to go and yeah. process to buy it. And then you had to process it. Yeah, it was the whole thing. Oh, yeah. You remember slides? The slide? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Ro- ro- slide oh, carousel. Yeah. Dude, my yeah, dad carousel. had an eight track player. Oh yeah, yes. an eight tra- and like a we in, had one too, in like a home system with like the speakers in every room playing yes. the eight track from the basement. Yeah. Oh yes, killing it. That's where Carpenters, you get it from. Eight track is what my parents had. <laughs> well, we just rolled right into this cold open, but we we got to introduce our guest. Oh. We we we're yes, we're we super do. informal, and I realized that when I was filming the course videos, like all the mm-hmm. advice I was giving people, like we don't do any of the things I'm telling people to do to have <laughs> successful. I'm like, you got to start with intention. You got to tell them what this the is show's what not about. To do. I'm like, or you could just start talking in the middle of the conversation. And there you go. Hope it all works out. But here we are. Well, this is kind of amazing, right? So. I met Diana through Marcus, and I met Marcus through Adam and Jen from DC Podfest. Yes. And Jen Crawford. Right after I met Marcus, he referred me to Diana, and I met Diana over the phone mm-hmm. from North Carolina. From that condo on the beach. I remember. Oh, wow. I remember. Because, you know, it's such a weird time, you know, ethereal time in life. Like, I remember, like, sitting on the couch, looking out the window, like, talking to you about all this stuff. And you were thinking about starting a podcast. And now here we are a year and some change, some change. later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and look at us happened. now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a year and some change older. And you're now an expert in podcasting. Oh, yes. I'm right? so the expert. <laughs> I'm so the expert. Not the expert, right? I have a lot of people asking me, saying, well, you do the podcast, so therefore you must be an expert. And I'm like, no. There's people that are way the hell smarter and better at me, <laughs> the better at this than I am. I just show up. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, okay, Liz, I will say... Thank you for the compliment. And we might be better at editing and some of the other things than you are, but mm-hmm. you are one hell of an interviewer. You, yeah. so really, you don't just show up. We just show up and we crank the, the hand Push crank. The buttons. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're the, you're the real magic because you do a great job and you have interesting people and you're a great interviewer. You're super compelling. You stay interested the whole time. You ask great questions like people. Come on, man. You're really good at it. Okay. All right. You are. Well, thank you for that. I, maybe I'm a, maybe I just like really like people, but maybe it's just the fact that I genuinely like people and I'm interested in them. That makes me good at that component. And then probably Definitely. years of socializing in the party circuit. <laughs> but, <laughs> aside, but aside from that, like, you know, it was an idea that I brought to you. And then you were like, hell yes, this is a thing. And this is what you could do with it, not knowing what could be done with it. And then there was a lot of whole like, well, yeah, but 
it's just me. It's not like, I'm not Oprah. I'm not, you know, what, it, what do I have to say? What do I have to do? And you're just doggedly persistent on like, no, this is a POV that you should be sharing out there. So I think the coaching component maybe is more what I'm expressing about um, the pros. You know, it's not, if you find the right people to work with, it's not about the technical stuff. It's their ability to inspire you to be great and to um, get prepared to be afraid and do it anyway kind of thing. Um, and, you know, Molly is such a great cheerleader from a business perspective. I mean, she gets on the personal side for sure. Like she just knows, like Molly, you're so good about like getting into the neuroses and kind of turning the neuroses around into like, well, no, that's actually your power, not your weakness. And, um, and then just getting people to try it almost like a coach, just try it on, just do it. Okay. Now try it on again. Now try it a different way. Try it with blue pants on, try it with a t-shirt. And now three months later, you're like, you kind of get the hang of it and you're starting to feel good about it. That's kind of how it felt, you know, with, you know, with you for, for example, coming on board that it was less about the, could you do this, but more about the, can you help me get over myself? That do you know what I mean? For sure. For sure. Cause it's a hard thing. Like being on a podcast, like I don't even, you know, I don't like watching my, you know, the videos. Like, why do you watch them all the time? I know I do actually. I do. I'm lying. Actually I do like, I think Marcus stuff. does. <laughs> We're, we are the number one fans. We are driving That's right. listenership through the, the download somehow through the dozens. You know what I'm saying? We're just <laughs> skyrocketing right out of that. Um, yeah, I mean, well, you know, I just, uh, you know, what really struck me is you were just in this place with your business. Everybody was with the pandemic. It was like, oh, God, do I even have a business? What is a yeah. business? Mm -hmm. Where yeah. am I? Right? Like, what? Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Why did you decide to start a podcast? Like, I know because you called me and said, hey, Marcus, can you help me start a podcast? I'm like, I, can't, I would love to, but I can't, but Molly can. So <laughs> mm -hmm. why did you call mm -hmm. us and say, I want to start a podcast? Well, David and I were... We were like trying to go, what, you know, what are different ways that we can find being out from a marketing perspective? We were looking at a number of, of ways, you know, should we spend more on advertising? Should we do um, branded content, blah, 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 which I guess podcast is sort of branded content, mm -hmm. depending yeah. on how you position it. And I kind of had a bee in my bonnet about what had been happening um, um, culturally and then from a business perspective. And, uh, the category that, that well so we do brand development so we build brands in the um, food and beverage and natural spaces uh, food and beverage and wellness brands in the natural spaces and what i had seen was kind of a fundamental shift in leadership as the natural space had become infused with a bunch of investment capital from silicon mm -hmm. valley food tech had really exploded and now natural products was no longer this kind of fringe thing. It was definitely mainstream. So we were seeing leadership moving over from conventional brands, which is what we call the kind of non-natural. You don't want to call them non-natural. So you call them conventional. And it was this um, <laughs> significant radioactive yeah, brands. Radioactive yeah. brands. <laughs> yeah. um, they were coming over. And what had happened was in naturals, which was fairly um, equal in men and women, not very diverse, but more diverse than it is now from a percentage standpoint. And we were seeing a lot of white men moving over from there into this natural space um, and taking leadership roles and making decisions on behalf of these brands, which had been traditionally a little bit more um, equitable in regards to leadership. And I was a little bent out of shape about that. And right about the, like the beginning of 2020, not only did we have the category shifting, but COVID started coming in and then we started the BLM movement. And I was like, well, the naturals category, even when it was uh, before it got really exciting, was still predominantly upper middle class Caucasian people. And yet the need, the bigger target audience is everybody else, the middle class and down and every color of the rainbow. Um, but in addition to that, there was, there's no, there's very little immigrant repre re representation. There's no, um, LG very little LGBTQ, very little dis disability, 
um, ageism. We were starting to see a lot of those older natural brands that were hippie brands. Now those people had moved out and now we kind of had lost this legacy and it was now the super young, fresh hip. And we got a bunch of 20 year olds that are making fun money on a bunch of other 20 year olds. And I'm like, the, this category should not be about rich white men telling rich white women how to be healthier. Like we're, they're already healthy and they're going to be fickle as an audience. So I wanted to, instead of getting pissed off and yelling and swearing and telling people to F off on social media, <laughs> I was like, why don't I create a platform where I just bring these women and just kind of start to normalize the fact that there is d diverse leadership in our industry and kind of creating a, if you can see it, you can be it type of environment. So um, a handful, of, like just to give you an example, a couple of the women that I've interviewed, um, the black women specifically who are like, I never saw myself, a lot of Asian women too. I never saw myself in, I never saw myself in business. This is not something that I should have done, blah, blah, blah. But then for them afterwards, so much pride because they have like the most amount of listeners on the mm. podcast coming back and going, yeah, I was telling, you know, my daughter, my, my daughter saw me do this recording. And so now her daughter not only sees her in business, but sees her as a leader. And that's really all I want to do is normalize the fact that taking care of people means taking care of everybody. And women do a great job at thinking holistically and men do a great job of thinking really siloed and deep. And it's really when we work together that we can really do some serious work but we got to get those voices in that conversation. So that's really what it was all about. That's I love awesome. it. I love it. I mean, you've done a great job. I mean, you've had how many? You've done like twenty episodes or something now, right? I, I think it, me and Matt were around third. No, we were closer to forty, almost close forty. Oh my, forty-eight. Forty-eight. 48? Yep. Whoa. Yeah. Well, damn, I got nice. that wrong. Can you, John, can you edit that out and make me look less? And... <laughs> You're the boss now. You're just the coach. <laughs> but that's amazing. That's crazy. Well, and so let's talk about the impacts of the podcast on your business, right? Because, yes. you know, you, that, you know, that topic, right, wasn't really like necessarily something that your business, you know, retail voodoo was like talking right. about normally, no. right? It was, we we even branded it separately, right? I remember yep. we used the same colors and fonts, mm -hmm. but we kept it separate mm -hmm. just in case one of them wasn't around, or <laughs> you know what I mean. You didn't. You, you were just like, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen, and yeah. I don't want this to impact negatively. I'm like, well, let's just brand it similarly so yep. that way it can tie in. We'll yep. just see what happens, and 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 so what you know, do you what happened? What did the podcast do to your business? Well, there's a, there is a huge, um, there's a credibility that comes to, that is haloed from the work that I'm doing, whether it's not me, it's these women, these guests that are coming on the show, but, um, I've had a number of conversations, um, first of all, with prospective clients who've said, yep, I've, I've listened to a whole bunch of your stuff. I really like, this is great. Like people that I wouldn't have ever expected saying I've listened to every last one. I'm like, wow. And then also prospective employees and other business partners that have come to the table and said, I just listened to the episode of blank. There's a way there's like this kind of weird mm, connection, not connection. It's almost like these people already know who you are before coming into the conversation, not because they've read about you. Cause when you read something, you use your own voice and your own inflection, blah, blah, blah. Yes. But when you're listening to somebody, it's suddenly like you listen to, if you've been crazy enough to listen to all 50 episodes by now, you already kind of get the way I talk about things. You have a general POV. So <laughs> The weird, the hard and weird thing for me is those people come in already know me and I don't know them. So there's a little right. bit of, um, there's a little bit of me catching up in the conversation sometimes to get comfortable, to get at their level of comfort. Does that make sense? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, been interesting. And then I have people who want me to be on their podcasts. Um, and, uh, 
the, the one thing that hasn't done for me yet, and I think is just a period of time is um, to kind of um, get in. There are some of those media content organizations that produce content for a fee and I'd like to get there, but I see them on the website. Now I see them, um, on my profile. So my hope is, is that one day, um, I'll get a call from like those desired media outlets to have a say or to be on a panel of some sort or whatever. And, and mostly I know this sounds so weird, not because I want the business. Don't get me wrong. I'll take the business every single day, but if I can have an impact and have people see the way, see what power they have in what they're doing outside of just selling product, that yeah. would be for me at the end of the day, that would be great. I love it. I absolutely that, love that's, it. Uh, yeah. And like, ha like, so you called me because I do the two Bob's podcast, yes. with, which is a couple of old white dudes. <laughs> I never but would have I love put that together. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they have they do consulting and yeah. you know they're the ones that like you got to do podcast and and I've I've had quite a few people call me. Mm -hmm. And I've had a couple people follow through and actually mm -hmm. do a podcast. Mm -hmm. Um but the question is, you know, what what is the value of this? And you just laid out a lot of the and, and you'll hear David and Blair talk a lot about mm -hmm. about your culture and mm -hmm. your personality coming through your brand. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what you said, people hearing your voice, that's your the human voice is mm -hmm. one of the best communication tool. It is the best communication tool we have when mm -hmm. it comes to ideas. And video helps for sure. But if it wasn't for the sound of our voice getting in our prospects brains, that's really to me the value of podcasting. The challenge though, is when people come to, to me and say, okay, when am I going to see a return on this yeah. investment that I'm paying you? And it's like that it's, you have to think bigger than that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to think bigger than that. You also have to think that a podcast works the same as any kind of other <clears throat> marketing or advertising element. It's right. not a single impression for, mm -hmm. for to use advertising terminology it's that yeah. cumulative oh i heard you now for the 17th time or somebody else recommended you in social media or um, a friend of yours ends up being on the podcast and now there's a little bit more cachet with it there, i it's de definitely cumulative um and the roi kind of goes up over time so like I could say I closed a significant piece of business that the podcast played a very important role in, um, in February or March. And it more than paid for all of the expenses of running the podcast mm -hmm. of the previous year. And then, and then some by a huge margin. So you only need to close in my world. I only need to close one piece of business a year from wow. the podcast in order for, um, in order for there to be an ROI. Um, other people have lower margin or they have, you know, they have smaller engagements and it's a slightly different model. So you of mm -hmm. course have to kind of look at it. You do have to look at it. What, what is it? The end goal? Like for me, I think when I was talking with Molly, this was more of a movement and you were like, no, you can make this more of a business push too. It doesn't have to just be a movement. It could be a business. Yeah. Other people are going to come to the table and go, I want this as my marketing tool. And so, um, that's where you have to kind of, I'm reading Simon Sinek right now, start with why. So you kind of have to have, um, a POV, right, Molly? You can't right. just be like, I want you to listen to my podcast because I want you to buy my stuff or my services. Right. You have to figure out exactly why you exist. Otherwise, you're just more noise and then you're not going to get any kind of returns. And to be fair, like what Molly told me, what she's like, it's not about you having, you don't need to be the Kim Kardashian uh, of mm -hmm. podcasts and have 4.5 million listeners. You need seven people and uh, to, for, for, to listen to a podcast, to close a piece of business. Like, you know, yeah. you gotta have to figure out what, what, it, what, 
what does the numbers need to look like for what it is you're doing? If you're wanting to start a revolution like a, a Molly One Love, you want a <laughs> jillion people, right? You want a zillion, jillion people because your goal at the end of the day is to convert all of these people. For me, I know that if I just make one or two impacts in business and then it spreads like this, then mm -hmm. I've done my job. I don't need to be I don't need to be doing that work, but different objectives. So knowing what your end game is, I think is super important, just like with any marketing kind of any kind of marketing that you're going to do. Yeah. Well, so, and that brings up a good point, right? It's like, you know, having a very clear call to action and just being realistic because, you know, you know, even, you know, if w for you, one client could pay for the year, maybe for somebody with a smaller engagement, mm -hmm. maybe it's one client a month. Mm -hmm. But like, if you get 50 people to listen to your podcast, like yep. turning one of them into a client shouldn't be that hard. If, yeah. You know what I mean? If, if you're, if you have good content and if people mm -hmm. know that you're passionate and mm -hmm. intelligent about that topic, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I have another client, ICQ, I, IQT, and they do like a geospatial satellite mapping podcast. It's like GitHub. And I'm like, I have no idea what you got. I could be in the room and I'm still like, <laughs> what? You know, uh, and, and they just, they were like, oh, we have a thousand unique listeners. I was like, that's awesome, man. They were like super stoked. And I'm like, listen, you're, you're, you're never going to get to like a million listeners, but you don't need a million listeners because yeah. that right. thousand listeners is going to get you like a $10 million contract, you yeah. know, because they're talking about, you know, if you're going to hire some geospatial satellite mappers, you're going to hire the people that have a podcast about it right. too, because not only are they intelligent, but they're passionate. Right. So I think, you know, there's like the direct correlation and like, you know, keeping your numbers realistic. Number one, this isn't TikTok, right? You don't right. need, you know, like we got to back off this idea of needing to have hundreds of likes and you know, you don't, you don't need that. Like you said, if you're trying to start a revolution, you want to be famous, you want to be on, you know, Apple new and newsworthy, you know, <clears throat> well, you better put some money and get a PR person behind that. Yes. If you mm -hmm. really want to do that, that's a whole other ball game. But from a business right. perspective, how many years do you need? And then there's also like collateral benefits, right? So yeah, you can say, for sure, this one pod, you know, this one client, they mentioned the podcast. I know the podcast was instrumental, right? But, but it's just like you said, being on a panel or other conversations, hiring. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. What a great yeah. way for an, a, a new employee, you know, to check out a company's ethos. Like, who mm -hmm. am I going to work for? I want to work. Mm -hmm. I just listened to 50 episodes of how this woman's brain works and what she cares about i want to mm -hmm. work for her now like mm -hmm. what a better way to i mean there's just so many collateral benefits that i yeah. that come with it that are hard to quantify mm -hmm. with like dollar amounts but like yeah. you know because then it you know that panel discussion or that speaking opportunity like how many deals did you get from that how many yeah. leads did you get from that yeah. how many other speaking engagements did you get? i mean it's just like you know, when you really start opening your mind to those possibilities, you know, and that's what that's what's hard. You know, I reference you a lot, actually, you know, talking you? to people. It's like, oh, you're sweet. Well, I do, because, you know, you were like, you know, I'm not I'm not sure. I think this is going to work and this is important to me, but I'm really not sure. And I'm taking a risk. And I was like, mm -hmm. you are, but I think it'll work. Mm -hmm. And then here here we are. You know what I mean? Like it really worked. So it's just mm -hmm. it's cool to it's just cool to know that like we're on the right track with things to see it yeah. play out. Right. Cause I don't want to yeah. own a business that just takes money out of people's pockets and then it doesn't work. You know what I mean? Like that's like, no, I believe in this stuff. You know what I mean? That's why I teach yeah. it. That's why I'm excited about it. That's why, I mean, I've been elevating and amplifying voices for 20 plus years, right? This is just a different extension of it. Mm -hmm. But to see, you know, the, the direct results and to have, you know, clients like you who like who come back and speak so highly. I mean, that, that's like amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the best mm -hmm. you could hope for when you own a business is that yeah. that it works, you know. So, yeah. And, and what a great time to be able to, you know, express solidarity. You know, Diana mm -hmm. lives in Seattle. So, you know, while while President, you know, Trump was clearing the streets for his Bible shots, you know, they were like, you know, shutting people down in Portland. So ours, mm -hmm. you know, our climate was crazy mm -hmm. similar uh, mm -hmm. last year. And what a great way to take all that energy and channel it into something productive. Making yeah. a difference. Yeah. yeah. There's also something to be said about, you know, I'm, I'm an extrovert. I think that sometimes goes hand in hand with 
people who do sales and marketing. Um, mm-hmm. But there's something to be said about having conversations, real life conversations with people that aren't always hard sales, so to speak. You know, I, yes. there are certain people that will respond that will not respond to any kind of biz dev effort outreach that I've ever done, but I'll ask them to be on the podcast and they'll be on the podcast. And it doesn't mean I'm going to get business from them. I may never get business from them, but I get to know them and I get to talk to them and I genuinely like people, mm-hmm. most people, um, <laughs> but I, that getting, uh, getting their attention and getting their time and talking to them, it, it kind of, um, it helps my heart and my soul rather than just, you know, keyboarding it and emailing it and scheduling CRM out. Like I'm like actively having a conversation about somebody um, and I get to know them personally. I, I, I mean, for me, that's kind of a, a soft benefit as well. Like this, it just makes my job funner. For sure. So I, I'm sure that both of you have been, have experienced this as well, but I'm getting these DMS and whatever social app, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, mm-hmm. Facebook, I'm getting emails from people scraping and getting my email address yeah. mm-hmm. saying, you know, I, I love your podcast. Yep. They don't mention what it is. Yeah. And the one guy even said, which I just got another follow-up email from him today saying he left a review on my wife's podcast that I do with her, mm. which is about marketing. And he's trying to market to a marketer. Yeah. And he's, it's like the, like what you're saying, it's like this cold pitch thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know you. Why, why yeah. should I even respond to your email? Yeah. And the other part of the podcast, besides having that human voice element, is everybody listening. I know for me, at least, when I listen to other podcasts, I feel like I'm sitting in the room with them. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm part of the conversation. And it goes back to what you were saying mm-hmm. about how they know you mm-hmm. from your podcast, but you don't know them. <laughs> yeah. And that's that that's the amazing thing I love about podcasts is like you. It's so more, it's so much more informal. Mm-hmm. and personable mm-hmm. and you, you it's like you're getting in people's heads and and they're in the room with you mm-hmm. and you already have this connection with them even though you have never talked to them before yeah yeah it's i mean if if you're a people person at all this is such the great platform to just feel i mean if you're not organized maybe not so much get yourself an admin to help you get organized but like so um fulfilling and being able to even like even chatting with um matt molly's molly's uh what, what do we officially call him tech engineer engineer He's sorry engineer. i should know that he's sorry. molly's marcus sorry matt yeah. <laughs> yeah. i sorry, mean matt. even <laughs> having that that regular check-in with matt and matt is you know he's a tech guy so the soft the soft skills aren't quite the same as molly's but he's yeah you sound great and you're like okay, okay i'm good okay i'm good just you know that added you know, more human touch of of somebody and they're going, yep, you're great. You're cool. You know, this, those little attaboys that are different than the kids. When you are running your own business, it's, it can be a slog. How many sales did I get? Did I reach out to enough Mm -hmm. people? Am I closing enough business? What, you know, how am I going to balance this? Blah, 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 X, Y, and Z. And to just have the podcast kind of check so many different boxes for me personally, that it's something that even if there was no ROI, I would still continue to do because it fills just a part of me so much. But again, it was because I got coaching that kind of set my head in the right spot about what this could be for me. Does that make sense? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, me and Marcus and Adam started this podcast because I was just you know, I was like, this would be good for business, you know, and there's no podcast about podcasting specific. You yeah. know, and I, I felt like mm-hmm. we brought unique things to the table with the gear mm-hmm. and then, you know, mm-hmm. but mostly like, I just, I want to hang out with Marcus and Adam <laughs> once a week. And it's just a good outlet because everything can't be like business yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know, like that's what I was kind of laughing when I was filming the course this week. And I was like, I need to take my own damn advice. <laughs> <'cause> I- <laughs> I just told people for three hours what to do and I'm doing none of it. So none I'm going to make it. some improvements myself, but at the core, it's the same thing. I love people. And, mm-hmm. um, one of my favorite interviews I did on another podcast of mine ended up being like, not only like 
a number one client for Hardcast Media with all the you know websites and DC government and I mean just mm-hmm. really put us in the fold. Uh, but he's also like legit my favorite human on the entire fucking planet. Wow. Like he's such a good. I'm so. You know, just honored. Like, he sent me a message and just like, I just want you to know I love you and I hope you're doing good in Costa Rica. Normally, that might be kind of weird from a client. (laughs) You know, I recognize that. But it's not at all with him because he's just Mm -hmm. such a good person. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's like, and it came from that interview where I researched the hell out of him and I asked him questions and I asked him about when he was a high school mascot in, you know, upstate New York. And so, and so now apparently all the like, um, school teachers from Sackett Harbor are like, we're famous now. We were on a podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And so he said the last time he went home, everybody was making a big deal about the podcast where they talked about Sackett Harbor, but you know, yeah, it's that human element, you know what I mean? And it, and for sure it was good for business, but it was, it was even better for my soul just mm-hmm. getting to find out what makes him tick and who lit mm-hmm. that fire and just, you know, all of those things. Yeah. I think there's a real need for that personal touch right now too, just with everything going on. And like, we're, as we're all saying, we are far from through the thick of it, you know? Um, you know, I was just, uh, I had lunch with a friend and business partner and I was like, you know, part of me is like super hopeful and like planning for the future and like building retreats and launching this business and like, you know, getting in shape and feeling the best I've ever had. And part of me thinks we're all going to be dead in 18 months. And I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying like, I just, you know what I mean? Like I, I believe that both of those things are possible. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. not 18 months and I'm not trying mm-hmm. to be all like doomsday, but I just, yeah. maybe six. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It could be 24, you know, but like, it just feels like a weird time, right? Because I am excited about the future as long as I stay off the internet and don't read the news. (laughs) Don't go outside and (laughs) talk. But other than that, you know what I mean? I feel great. Um, I'm just kidding. But like, seriously, it's such a weird time, right? Because I feel like we're in this like global consciousness shift, but then like half of the people didn't get that memo and they're. They're just sort of dragging us down and then oh. everything just keeps mutating. And I don't know. I just feel like now more than ever, it's a good time to just maintain or or create personal relationships. And if you can be the voice in someone's ear that makes them feel better, that's awesome. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Re- it's really awesome. You know, it just <sighs> because what else are we doing? You know, yeah. if that's we're right. not finding ways to connect with one another. Um, and I think you know, one of the things that really bothers me about like um, social justice work is a lot of times people say like, we're giving people a voice. And it's like, no, man, people have voices. <laughs> it's, it's like some white savior or something. Like, you didn't give right. Okay, God. <laughs> <laughs> Reel it in, bro. You didn't give anybody a voice. You're giving people a platform. <laughs> Reel right. it in, bro. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's really like we really have to adjust so much of our language. We're like, I'm giving him a voice. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. No, it's about finding your voice in a way to express it. Exactly. And, and yeah. somebody giving you a platform to do it. And if you have privilege yeah. and you yeah. have an audience as an mm-hmm. ally, yeah. it's your responsibility to like open that platform up to people who don't have those platforms. And yeah. that's what your podcasts and lots of podcasts do. But that's yeah. what yours really did. And I think that's the best way to do it because, you know, we're not, you know. The, the saviorism thing it's a weird it's a weird place you know and so instead you're like talking to somebody and finding out about them and sharing their story and i love what you said about the woman whose daughter gets to see her in a different way like wow like mm-hmm. you can't think about that but that mm-hmm. that's so cool mm-hmm. you know yeah uh so yeah I, i'm all for it you know whether it, business podcast or personal podcast it's still yeah it's all the same because I, yeah. especially I think moving forward, people want more humanity in the businesses that they agreed. Yes. Support. Yeah. Yeah. I'd even say one of the things, you know, as I'm sitting here listening to what you have to say, I think part of it is that, that, you know, anybody that's listening, that's considering a podcast is, um, I think sometimes a weakness all of us humans have is, um, being afraid of making mistakes or asking stupid questions or not being able to get it right. And, um, I um, actually embrace all of that, but I am, I live with lo- like my business partner really wants to know everything before 
he moves forward into the next step. And I'm a little bit like, okay, well, I'll fall down 12 times and get beat up and then I'll figure it out along the way. <laughs> but I know more people who don't, don't want to look stupid or don't want to look dumb or don't want to mess up. And what I want to say is, is like, just ask, because when you ask, like me reaching out to Molly, I'm, I'm going to speak for you, Molly, and you can tell me if I'm full of shit. But what me reaching out to you and saying, I'm afraid, I don't know what to do. Is this the right thing? Am I crazy? Will this be fun? Will it be hard? Gives you like me asking you gives you the opportunity to reach out to me and help me. And that has a, there's a level of fulfillment for you that had I not asked, you would not have had the opportunity to do. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people forget that asking is actually a two way dialogue. Mm -hmm. And me, like me going, Marcus, who should I talk to? He can't help me, but he found somebody else. Like, yeah, you should talk to Molly. Like even that is um, an opportunity for Marcus to give himself some value of being able to help somebody. So I, hmm. you know, I, I kind of, I always have to remind myself that just even the, even the act of asking is helping somebody else fulfill something that they themselves want to be for somebody. Does that make sense? I just feel 100%. Like yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And to go along with that idea too of, how we're all growing together and we're all helping each other. Mm. I'm going to say something that I just like, I feel strongly about now mm -hmm. because of this conversation mm -hmm. that if you are a business consultant of mm -hmm. any kind, if you are helping people with their mm -hmm. business, like the three of us do, mm -hmm. you have to have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to, because this place that we're in right now, the three of us on screen together is the best place for me to get new ideas mm -hmm. that I can then pass on to the mm -hmm. other people that are paying me to help them. Mm -hmm. Like it's through these interactions with these people that I w wouldn't otherwise be able to talk to mm -hmm. that I get to grow myself yeah. and then therefore grow my business because I'm developing through learning from you two and I'm going to be able to pass that on to somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful and thing. That doesn't, ha doesn't happen on a blog. <laughs> no. No. Or Blogs a, are talking at people. Right. Or a, or a vlog cast. Right. Remember when we invented the vlog cast? Like the vlog cast. Ago? What is that? <laughs> I don't do I know? It's it a video. Like a disease you get from like blog. being barefoot for too long, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what you got a nasty case of low cast on your foot there timmy um you got that um that accent down pretty good there <laughs> well i did live in north carolina for six months you know what i'm saying <laughs> all you got to do is slow everything way down so there so ever one point in my life i was a secret shopper for hotels resorts and casinos and so oh, cool i traveled all over the united states and caribbean staying in hotels and then like you know with the like white glove and checking the you know and some of them were like crazy sketchy places and some were really really nice but um i got to be whoever i wanted to and so one time <laughs> me and my best friend who has an excellent sense of humor we decided to be real southern y'all <laughs> And we we stuck with it for a whole weekend. I my stomach hurt for a week after that from laughing. I'd be like, check your arm clock and see what time it is. You know, like I mean, I just we we went so hard on the you know, and so it's always there. I can I can just pull it out in a minute, right, right there. A little too it's, easy uh, there, Molly. A little too. That's easy. right. It was the most fun I've ever had in my bet. life because you just get to be, so, you know what I mean. I was like using a fake ID and fake name and checking in the. It was pre nine eleven. Uh, you know, I'm um, using arm clock for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's right my now. favorite. <laughs> Check your arm clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It was like we had so many good jokes that week, and so yeah, you have to, you know. I could also do like an East LA accent for a while because I live East. In, 
Yeah, wow. like past the wire cutters, but like I don't do that anymore because I don't want to offend anybody. But yeah. like very like boys, boys southern in the hood. Southern people are okay to offend, but <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah, southern people, <laughs> whatever. Like, they, they got what it else? coming. <laughs> yeah, you can get back. It'll to take them people. four or five months before they figure it out, anyways. <laughs> well, they get offended I, at anything I anyway. So well, not. Like, I mean, maybe parts of North Carolina, but there's a lot. North Carolina is changing pretty rapid. It is I don't actually. Know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you want this is totally off topic, but. When I lived in North Carolina, I did a little research. I'm like, where the hell do I live? What is this place all about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and apparently, like the late 1800s, I think it was. I, don't, I get always really bad with numbers, but in the yeah. past, uh, the town was very Republican, and all the Republicans were there was like black people, and like it was super diverse, and yeah. they won a bunch of elections. And then the Democrats were the white guys with guns who came yep. in and like yep. burnt the fucking courthouse down and yep. like killed people and like yep. were like, nah, it's ours. And then that's why <laughs> North Carolina, like Wilmington in particular, is super mm -hmm. democratic. But like it just threw, I was like, wait, what? Wait. Yeah. It <laughs> wait, changed. What? You know, when it changed, it changed um, right around the Reagan administration when what Democrats stood for and what Republicans stood for flipped. Huh. Yeah, I was I was so confused. I had no idea. Yeah. I was like, "Dude, mm -hmm. what? Hold mm -hmm. what? Yeah, the Democrats from a hundred years ago are technically republic. What we consider Republicans and vice versa. It's right. super tricky. Weird. It's super weird. Super weird. You guys you, a, yeah, that, United that's States whole whitewashing their history. Oh shit! They're like, no, mm. we're Republican. No, we're the you know. I know. It's just whatever. <laughs> it's like if you're a Monty Python fan, you can just watch that on loop and. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Check your arm clock for the next Change show. Your arm clock for the next show. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I mean, you know, if you can't laugh, yeah, you know, if you can't laugh, well, what, you what just you, got to. What I mean, doing? what else? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I went through time. It probably probably will happen again because I'm just human. But you know, you cycle through times when. For whatever, it just has to be the right set of circumstances all hit you at the same time and you kind of get negative and you, it takes, takes a lot of work and it takes friends who kick you in the butt and smack you around a little bit to kind of go, I get it, but you know, do you really want to live there? Do you really want your head to live in that headspace? Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's tough, man. You know, it's tough, especially right now. There's a weird energy coursing through. You know what I mean? If you if you if you tune in too long to the Matrix, it's gonna get you too. It's it's a mm -hmm. weird suck in. Weird. Yeah. I don't know if Mercury's in retrograde. It's always know. in retrograde. I don't. It's always. In Every time I talk to there was that one there was we had this one person on staff, and I would swear Every time something would go wrong, she'd be like, "Mercury's in retrograde," and I'm like, "Didn't you say that last week too?" Like it's like. <laughs> What's She's like, oh, no, it lasts shit. nine months out of the year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just get to decide which month. Which month? I don't even I, know I, what that means. Well, I don't just, really know either. It, <laughs> it's just a cop out is what it is. Um, yeah, no, there, you know, well, it is, you know, we have all this collective trauma from the last, you know, 18 months that we're just not dealing with and. Yeah, man. That's why everybody should, you know, listen to podcasts, listen to audiobooks, you know, start a yeah. podcast, dial in on some better voices in your head. Like I listened to, uh, or I didn't listen to, but I got really into the show called The Midwife. It's on PBS. Yeah, I yeah. heard about it. Mm -hmm. And they had it on Netflix. And it's like, you know, East London, the 60s, and it's about the, the midwifery. And, and they lived in the convent with the nurses, with the nuns, and they would deliver babies and just the condition. It's a fascinating show. But their language is so like, it's just so beautiful and descriptive. And they're, you know, and I'm like, I think my vocabulary consists of like 10 words and like, fuck, crazy and like shit or three of them. And I'm like, I really need to level up my vocabulary. Good God. But I like, I, there's like 10 seasons of it, but it's just so lovely. And then Renette, uh, Vanessa Redgrave does like mm. a summary at the end with her super beautiful voice, you know? And I like cried at the last episode because like oh, I missed their voice. I missed the cadence of the way they, I just missed it filling the Isn't house. It was right funny. before I left too. And it was just getting oh, colder and darker yeah. every day. And they were like my, you know, 
uh, with their like very innocent humor. It's a bunch of nuns, you know what I mean? But it was it's such a good show. And I feel like podcasts and audiobooks are that way. Um, except the podcasts get to grow with you instead of just like a series you're watching. It's yeah. like you can evolve with them. So Unless you're like Adam and you're obsessed with true crime podcasts. Oh, and living I love in a dark, true crime. Dark now he knows world. how to kill us all. <laughs> love making true fun crime. Of his microphone. <laughs> yeah. Every week. Yeah. True crime is the best. Oh, my God. You're know. one of them, too? I am. Oh. Well, look, Ted Bundy is from my neighborhood. That ends oh, up. well, then you got to. So, you don't have a choice. I'm not, I don't fully understand the correlation. The, the there, connection. But, yeah. I don't understand it either. I'm making shit up right now. Yeah. But um, I, in, when I was in my early 20s, uh, I, I read uh, Anne Rule, who writes true crime books. And her first book was Stranger Beside Me, which was about Ted Bundy. And I read it. And I think the reason why I got into true crime is when I read the book, pretty much. Like he worked at the University of Washington, which is walking distance from where I live now. And most mm. of his crimes took place, like all of the places that these things happen. Like I went there, I'd been there, I'd known them. There Man. was like this personal like connection to all of these spaces. And so then I started reading more true crime about crimes around Seattle, which was a bad idea because then I started to be like asking security cards to drive, walk me to my car at night and stuff like that. It's, I don't want to walk to my car by myself, but Whatever. I don't know what it is. The psychology of somebody as brilliant as Ted Bundy, who smarter than shit, like super, super smart guy and decide that this is what he's going to do with his life is kill people. Like it's such a bizarre. You should have started a podcast. Should have started a podcast. I would have been. It doesn't freak you out. Like I watch like eight seasons of Dexter because I was like a oh, late bloomer and then I, I just saw I looked at everybody like yeah. you probably killed your mom <laughs> you know like it like it <laughs> you know like it, I, I was you know it was not good it was not good it was not good for my psyche I no, was like no. you know I yep. was refer I was using Dexter as like a verb <laughs> you know I was like, all right we gotta <laughs> we gotta Dexter this guy here I gotta <laughs> yeah <laughs> but seriously I was like well then it just made me realize like you know how many serial killers there are out there like Mm -hmm. right now oh, all yeah. the time yeah yeah yep. unsolved i know dexter and people dexter and <laughs> yeah. people yeah i yeah i couldn't watch it. i couldn't get through the first episode of dexter i can read about it i can't watch it so i loved it for some reason i don't know, I don't know. maybe i'm a true crime person after all oh, God. <laughs> don't tell anybody my reputation it'll just be us really just us us four <laughs> <laughs> i am um, so Go ahead. What is your favorite? Do you have a favorite podcast or a favorite oh. audio book or a favorite? What is what's your favorite guilty pleasure? <sighs> My audio favorite play? guilty audio. You know, what do I listen to? You know, what I listen to a lot of is This American Life. Um, hmm. And I listen to a lot of NPR, yeah. loads of NPR. Um, there is it. Guy Ross, How I Built This by yeah. with Guy yes. Ross. Oh, I love that. I've, uh, and because most of the people that he's interviewing are in the industry that I'm in too. Right. Um, right. And I love, so How I Built This, um, there's one that's, there's one that's right next to that. Um, Planet, Planet Money is also interesting for me and This American Life. And there was one show that I don't remember, remember. That was like a game show on NPR that was right around the time of This American Life. Um, oh, I don't remember. Lots of lots of NPR. I like to, I kind of like, I referenced Monty Python earlier. I kind of like my, I like to be, I like smart humor where you kind of have to understand the backstory to understand why it's funny rather than mm -hmm. I'm not a fart joke, fart joke kind of girl. Although it can entertain me, but mostly <laughs> I'm like, I'm like oh, hey, I understand. Hey, hey. <laughs> I like the joke that not everybody's in on. How's that? There you go. Yeah, it's a little snobby, but it, it's it's what it is. Yeah, I, I can dig it. What's yours? Um, you know, I really love John C. Maxwell, so I'm on a kick of just listening to all of his books. Okay, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm trying to shift out of not listening to so many leadership books from white men. There's yeah. just not very many of them. Well, it's time for right. you to write yours. I That's am. Right. It's called Fuck That Charge Double. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm no, like you kidding should. First, absolutely. And then I was like, no, actually, I'm not kidding. So I'm going to do the course first, and then I'll turn it into a book. There you go. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. What about you, Marcus? What are you listening to or watching? Uh, 
Well, I listen all day long to other people talking, That's true. so I don't. So you yeah. don't. <laughs> I don't Marcus listen. goes into was, a padded it, room at 6 p.m. every yeah, night. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it was the same way when I toured with bands. Like, I wouldn't listen to music because I was listening to music all day all long. All day long. You know, every day. So, yeah. But when I did listen to podcasts, I, I liked uh, Back to Work and Reconcilable Differences. Mm. Mer- Merlin Mann and John Syracuse. They're a couple of white nerd dudes that are about my age. So, but I could relate to them. <laughs> you got to tell me what bands you rolled with or what was your favorite tour, maybe? My favorite tour. Favorite tour. The favorite memories I have on tour, I guess, are when I was out with the Cowboy Junkies. Okay. Canadian and band, right? They- Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And I, I, oh, I can't remember the name of their hit. I was actually working with the opening band, which was Over the Rhine. Oh, I don't know that. From Cincinnati. They, they were the opening band, and they also backed them up. So oh, Karen, cool. who's the lead singer. Yeah. So I was their road manager and stage sound guy, their monitor engineer. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the Cowboy Junkies got to play Lilith Fair. So this Ooh. is why it's my favorite tour, because I got to go out on Lilith Fair with the cowboy junkies and I didn't have to do anything all day long because my band that I was working for wasn't playing. I was just kind of there supervising, like making sure the bus had parking and that sort of stuff during that. But it was cool. Cause I just got to sit and watch all these amazing women just shred on stage all day, every day. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Marcus wow. is but, an amazing feminist. I don't know if you know that about him, but he's well, I, I I'm am learning that champion. right now. Champion. Yeah. Of our causes, truly. Yes. And it's it's because I'm married to an amazing woman as well who's a business leader. So, well, it's not because you're married to her, it's because you are like. Well, I can't. Have I'm surrounded to... by amazing there you go. women. You that can be influenced, I can but gladly <laughs> follow who are amazing <laughs> leaders and can teach me a lot. Well, oh, oh, me goodness. and Marcus have the same birthday. No, that's right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Same yeah. year, same age too, right? Like same year. Uh, seventy four. Oh, seventy five. Oh, yeah. you guys. So I'm a year older. I'm the yeah. baby, as I like to refer to my <laughs> You um, are. But isn't that crazy that we have the exact same birthday? Yeah. What day? Well, don't tell me the day now. Then you'll be publishing your birth, your whole oh, birthday. And what's your I'm, social security number? October fifteenth, nineteen ninety two. Just got okay. my ID to drink. <laughs> I can. And Marcus, my first pet was. Yeah. <laughs> my mother's maiden name. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll tell you a funny story because my favorite. So I have two favorite bands of all time, and Molly might know this or not. My favorite band of all time is Aerosmith. I used to hate rock. Really? Yeah. In in high school, I hated rock. I was I was um, <laughs> I was into punk rock and techno. Okay. In of course. The 80s, right. Yeah. Total. Total yeah. punk rock and hated rock. And then um, I started dating. A, and after like the third guy was like, oh, went from uh, now I love Rush and now I love this. And so, <laughs> so Rush technically awesome band, but a hey, per- rock. <sighs> yeah. Right. <What's> <laughs> um, but from a personality standpoint, Aerosmith just ha- has me hand down. My brother got me to an event where Aerosmith was doing like a, signing a book signing kind of thing yeah and you know me i'll talk to anybody you see me and i'm there and we get in front of steven tyler and my brother's right behind me and the only words i could get out of my mouth were oh my god which i said <laughs> over and over <laughs> as i stood stone straight my brother physically had to move me <laughs> <laughs> and so I have spent the rest of my life finding an opportunity to redeem myself. He's going to be like 105 and in, and in a walker before I finally meet him again. But um, he's going to be like, oh my god, take me to this planet. Like, I'm 105. I almost got sent up to wire up his house because the the. The, the in Hawaii the one outside house? of Boston. Oh, the Boston one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there so many times. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every but I worked for an installation <laughs> company, and somehow we got called to do shut the his, door. Yeah, but what my 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 coworker got to go instead of me. So, oh, but well, he's Bastard. a wee little guy. 
Like he looks, he? yeah, he looks wee. I mean, he looks really tiny on like, right. A camera always makes you look bigger than you actually yeah, are. Yeah. And he looks skinny. I saw him in real life and I'm like, Hmm, he's really small. <laughs> he's Is like, he short too? Um, n- no, I mean, think he's okay. average height, but he's so damn thin, but he's just you know. skinny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you know, if you're running, I think I heard you would know this. But if you're running on stage the equivalent of a full marathon every night, you're oh, not yeah, going to yeah. be you're not going to be a big person. Oh, and he I has never a really very- thought about that because he is so physical with his performances. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a and they, that's what they're saying about like you know until they get older and stop moving around on the stage. But you look like even um, um, like what's the Kansas his guys, Rolling Stones. Like <laughs> there's a reason why those guys are skinny. They're like running physically right well, on that the and stage all the, the drugs time. too oh yeah well that and cocaine but <laughs> yeah yeah that you I know, know i know saw anything about it. red hot chili peppers perform yeah see, i was living in california so that was like 2002 three or four or five one of those years that was mm-hmm. when i was out with creed oh, okay and so and <laughs> And like, you know, chili peppers, I mean, even then that was like a little past, you know, that's like 10 years past yeah. their heyday. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And they, they, you know, like Flea was like, or uh, Anthony Kiedis was like doing like uh, leg splits, like jumping yeah. over Flea, like yeah. leapfrogging over Flea <laughs> yeah. and doing, I'm like, I, I, I actually like never disliked chili peppers, but I wasn't a fan, but a friend was yeah. like, Hey, I need a designated driver. I'll buy you a ticket. And I, I didn't really yeah. drink much. I only smoke weeds. I was like, mm-hmm. sweet, let's do that. And let's do uh, that. that was the best show. I I was so impressed by, I was like, I, I didn't realize how many hits they had until I was like, Oh I yeah. Know every song <laughs> and chili it's peppers going on yes. for two and a half mm-hmm. hours. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it was such a physically impressive show. I I walked yeah. away just being like, hats off to those guys. That was that was the real deal for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny like hearing our passions for live events <laughs> coming out because you know I don't miss touring. I don't miss doing concerts anymore. But I there is something special about being in a room and experiencing a unique moment, especially when there's music involved. You know it, and I guess there's an element of that with podcasting, and but it's recorded so that it gets you know, but we're probably not ever going to have this conversation with anybody else, you know? <laughs> no. So no, yeah. just people can listen to it again if they want to. It's a different time. I, I went and saw um, fish. Oh, mm. I'm sorry. I hate even admitting that out loud. I fucking hate that band. It's more than anything. not, I do they're too. not bad. Come on now. Yes, they are. <laughs> Bag it. And, tag it. Uh, sell it to the butcher man. No, I'm like, stay on, pick one, pick a rhythm. <laughs> Uh, Stick to it. Finish the song. <laughs> it's <laughs> been 25 minutes. Let's move on to another song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's why it's a jam band, Marcus. But um, I know. But I went to see them in Vegas at the Thomas and Mac Arena, which holds 70,000 people. And, yeah. you know, Chris Komoda, I think his name is the light guy, is like world renowned, like the fish light guy. Yeah. I I felt like I was on insane amount of drugs. I was sweating. I felt like I was <laughs> levitating out of my chair. I was stone cold sober, but like the lights wow. and the wow. intensity and 70,000. And I'm sure everyone the else energy. was on drugs. So I was... <laughs> I was probably just in the ab- air. It was I probably was getting rained <laughs> on ecstasy sweat. Honestly, that's like there was like precipitation was Ew, happening inside that's of the venue. Disgusting. You know what? I think that actually happened because I was in the chair like, <laughs> like I was so hot and I literally felt like I was levitating, stone cold sober. But yeah, I mean, there's something to be said, right? But. But I don't yeah. know. Did you guys see the pictures of Lollapalooza? Like, <gasps> I did. No. I'm literally like super spreader. Like, the anxiety that it gives oh. me. Like even even if there wasn't a pandemic, I still think that picture would give me anxiety. But like, yeah, yeah. I don't. Th- you know, I loved my time at big events and Thomas mm-hmm. and Mac Arena. But like, I don't. Those days are gone. I, I'm never. Yeah. Going back into that kind of a situation again. Well, also, I live in Costa Rica now, man. I, I like live in the jungle and like I drive on dirt roads and like I drive a 19 year old car like my uh, what's normal is 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 <laughs> like a 40 year time warp. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, I'm like mm-hmm. even just being on paved roads like when I came home and the sun didn't set until, until like nine o'clock and I was like, what is happening? 
thing. I was like, I'm so freaking out. I'm like, I know I grew up here, but just like, you know, you just, you know, I yep. live really close to the equator, man. Everything's the same every day. It doesn't change. Weather's the same. Temperature's the same. Same amount of daylight, same amount of sunlight. And so, yeah, you, you know, you just adapt so quickly. So I don't really see myself ever being comfortable in like the same scenarios that I was comfortable no more fish in before. concerts. Yeah, no more. I saw that picture from Lollapalooza though, and I was like, "Oh, who the hell approved that shit?" Like, right? Well, I can tell you. Well, <laughs> I'm sure you can. T- you probably can point me to the exact person, but I'm like, okay, well, great. We're heading for lockdown. Well, okay, so this yeah. is one of those like why I think this 18 month doomsday scenario of mine might not be 100. <laughs> Because cause here's what it is. Live Nation owns the the company that hosts that, you know? So it was... Uh, they own everything? C3 Productions <laughs> ran that festival yeah. for years, and then they got bought by Live Nation. What most people don't know is that Lollapalooza resods all of Grant Park after Lollapalooza every year, which oh. saves the city millions of dollars. Oh. Oh, that was so good. We got a we got a sound bite. <laughs> that was a, yeah. uh, that was really. It's good. always some shit like it's that. It's right? always some yeah. shit. So I'm sure it wasn't just Live Nation. They're probably like, this is the only chance that you know. Like it was. It's always uh, you know. It's, it's been eighteen yeah. months since we resodded yeah. our so. Let's yep. Let's it's time for a concert. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're know. saying? I Who mean, cares if people die? I will just say know? that it's not as simple, right? You know, because even if Live Nation did want to cancel it, there was probably contracts and, you know, pressure. And, right? Like, there's just so many layers of things behind yeah. everything. So, you know, and I have friends that work uh, for C3 Presents and have yeah. booked that festival for years. And they're yeah. good people who just want yeah. to get back to work. So, you know, yeah. I'm not right. even going to villainize yeah. anybody. But it's, at yeah. the same time, it's like. I'm like, is there any CBD in the building? Like, fuck, man, just looking at that picture, I'm like, it makes me feel bad on the inside. So hopefully Chicago is going to be okay. I hope so. But me too. Who knows? It's people going to be coming from three to four miles, three to four miles, three to four hours away for that show, yeah. maybe even more so. Right. So for sure. Fingers so crossed. people come from Michigan and whatever. Yeah. You know, oh my God. Get me to a concert. I haven't been in a long time. Get me on a plane. I'm going. Right. right? There's plenty of that. Because right. and Lollapalooza is fun as fuck. I mean, yeah. it, it, you know, it really is. I mean, it's like, like three mile park or, con- yeah. you know, huge stages everywhere and it's all top notch. I mean, Skrillex. I mean, it's it's no. There's no. You know, there's nobody bad. Well, I don't like Skrillex, but you know what I'm saying. It's all top headliners, just like that's the not craziest. really relaxing music. So, I know. I'm like <laughs> these cartoons are really stressing me out. Um, but another little fun fact about Lollapalooza: they sell more beer in three days of Lollapalooza than the entire city of Chicago sells the entire rest of the year. Wow. Whoa. That's a lot of beer. That's a lot of Budweiser. A lot of beer. Chicago's my favorite city. Well, Chicago and New Orleans are tied for first in the United States for me. I love New Orleans too, actually. I love New Orleans. So, well, you know, well, we could we could end it on this because this is such a ridiculous thing. But I was thinking about. Uh, I have a friend who had a spinal surgery recently and she had the same surgery as me and I was leaving her a message this morning and I said, you know, just make sure you give yourself a little space and grace to like heal from that and the anesthesiology, like that shit is in your system for like a year. It's going to make mm. you fucking stupid. They say a couple weeks, but don't believe the hype. <laughs> and and they they put cadaver bone in your neck now. So I don't know if you what? guys know this. So instead of like, you know, taking a bone graft from your hip, they take bones from dead people and they put them into your neck hmm. and they use that as like the placeholder. And then what happens is over time, the cadaver bone starts to disintegrate as your bone starts to grow oh and replaces God. it. Wow. Cool. So eventually your body synthesizes it and you piss it out or whatever. I don't really know. But, you know, they do put, you know, and so I was thinking to myself, well, maybe that's my fucking problem. I got some dude from Chicago's bones in my neck. So, I mean, I had to fucking do something to me. I don't know, man. So, and the anesthesia, you know. too. <laughs> right. I'm like, Combo. Come on. I got somebody else's bones in my fucking neck. Like, you're telling me that's not seeping into my DNA? So, uh, 
<laughs> so, Anything's I possible. I don't know if it's really oh, a guy from man. Chicago, but I think it is. So I'm going to go with that. All right. So if I've ever offended you, don't blame me. Blame Tommy. That's <laughs> what so I'm going to call him. <laughs> is that his name? <laughs> yeah. Tim, it's the uh, it's the, Tim, it's Tim the cadaver bone. Yeah, <laughs> can't be held responsible. I love it. I love it. <laughs> These are like actual things that take place in my brain. Like I get it. Wasn't just a joke. I, I a so real get that conversation. Uh, well, listen, Diana. Thank you so much for coming on the show and hanging out with us. And I love your new background yes. and your new mic thank and you. the, all the black and white vibes. You're killing it, killing it. Mm. Well, it's. Not it's not for anything but you guys, man. If it wasn't for the two of you, I'd probably still be cranking out emails and fretting over <laughs> stupid shit. So it's all well, you. There you go. Well, listen, the the pleasure is all ours, and I look forward to you know being your friend for a long time. And one yeah. of these days, I'll even be able to give you a hug. I don't know. I know. How, I gotta day. come down to Costa. I saw that. I legit that. Um, that um, retreat center that I sent to you, I'm like, I got to go there. I don't know how far away that is from you, um, but it's got to be, I got to do a girl's trip or something down there. And I'm totally down. I got to have a those uh, sunset pictures you sent, like you post oh, pretty much every day. They're ridiculous. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it looks like cotton candy. Oh, it's Tuesday. World out there. It's Tuesday for Molly. <laughs> no big <Right>. deal. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sometimes I'm like, Whatever, it's fine. You love it, you know. Yeah. Well, I like to. I was really paranoid about sharing for a long time because of the break in and just not want to be like, yeah, hey, I got that, you. you know. Um, but like, I know people are interested, and life is very different right down here. Like, you know, when there's a herd of cows moving through. Like, <laughs> listen, know. when I when I go on to social media, I don't mind the occasional shit's horrible because I want to know what's bad. But I'm yeah. way more excited about like, oh, look at this thing that Molly's doing again. That's right. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, look at my, here's my godson smashing a cake in his face. Like, that's the kind of stuff Anything. I want to see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all of that. <laughs> I want to see the good stuff and I want to see way more of the good stuff than the crappy stuff. I don't want to be dismissive. I know there's bad stuff out there and I um expose myself to it like my friends put some stuff up on there but i'm trying to work really hard and kind of go oh people don't want to see me as this all the time i can talk about it but i've got to have an equilibrium here and so i want to see all the good and i want to see all the bad that's part of being somebody's friend is seeing it all but yeah. um i do like i want to i want to be enjoying your life with you well yes come on down i got an extra bedroom <laughs> And a treadmill. Which is a lily, too. And a, and treadmill. a treadmill. Done. Bar? Dude, ev- life is a bar in Costa Rica. Right. What are you talking about? All Everywhere right. you go is a bar. This is pure gin. <laughs> this, this is, yeah. Explains a no, shit ton, they, doesn't it? <laughs> they call um, uh, beers road sodas. <laughs> <laughs> road sodas. <laughs> I'm I like, I think you just drinking on the way home from the grocery store. <laughs> you are going to have to turn that into a real life brand. Road I soda. I mean, road <laughs> soda. I mean, it's like not even like. It doesn't beer, even road pretend. Beer. It's not road soda. It's not real alcohol. It's just road <laughs> soda. And they sell these things called bamboo. And so you can get a mojito or a daiquiri or a rum and coke in a can for the road. For the road. It's the road. Do they have soda. vending machines on the street like they do in Japan? No, but every store. So like, there's like bigger grocery stores, but they're still not super huge. And then there's like mini supers. There's the super, and then the mini supers. And so every neighborhood <laughs> has a mini super, and it's like the size of like a Seven Eleven or like a gas yeah. station. Can you know? It's not very big, but yeah, they yeah. have like you know. But they only have like one of each item. They have one type of dish soap, and they have. You know, maybe oh. two or three types of bread, but like one type of cocoa powder and one type of. So you can go in there and get cleaning supplies, produce, bread. There's some meat in the, you know, in the refrigerator, you know, so you can live. And your street sodas. You know, and a road soda. And then every a road place, soda. Yeah, any <laughs> street road, it don't matter. And <laughs> All good. Everywhere you go. They they have like at least four coolers with like all single <laughs> beers. 
And like, uh, like we went to the beach the other day. We went to Playa Conchal and we were walking up and they're like, hola, hola. You know, we're like, no, we don't need any of those things, but we need a tent. And he was like, okay, follow me, ladies, Antonio. So we go down. He's like, got a pop up tent for us and then proceeded to like serve us all day. Every 20 minutes brought us cold beers, like would bring them into the ocean. I was like, Antonio, what? let me come out of the ocean. I feel bad. Um, served us dinner out there. I had like mahi mahi and shrimp on the beach. Like, Whoa. what the yeah. hell? That's awesome. Right. Ten dollars for the rental of the thing, you know, two dollar beers. It was like fifty Stop bucks, it. you know, or whatever. Stop they, it. You know, I was like, take my money, please. Like, they made us Coco Locos, which is they 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 open it like a little fuzzy brown coconut, and they with a machete, yeah. and they open it up, and then they have you take a couple sips out, and then they take out this bottle of pina colada mix, and then a bottle of rum, and then stir it up and hand it back to you. They call it a Coco Loco, and it's the most amazing thing I've ever had in my entire life. It's like <laughs> they'll serve you drinks in pineapple shells, like it's just like. And it's all like local Ticos, like they carry the coolers out. They have like guys running and picking up more ice and like just working hard, no middleman. So yeah, it's a different it's a different it's a different world out here. And it's so hot that by ten AM you're like, I yeah, I can have a beer, right? Like it's right. so fucking hot. Like <laughs> you have to. I've been up since five AM, like I'm drinking a beer. Yeah. It's a whole day. I mean, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. So Yeah. <laughs> So you'll both have to come visit sooner than later. I think so. I think so. Definitely. I'm on board with that. I'll pick you up from the airport with a cooler full of road sodas. I love it. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> It'll be glorious. That'll be awesome. Absolutely. All right, y'all. Well, thank you again, Diana, for coming on the show tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, this episode will come out yes. next Monday. And uh, if you wow. listen. I know. Well, you know, turn around. Well, if you're listening, it's this Monday. Well, yes. If you're listening now, it's not last Monday. Don't (laughs) freak out. You're not having an existential crisis. You might be, but not because of this show. (laughs) Yeah. We claim no responsibility for your mental health either, by the way. Um, But no, if you've tuned into the show, thank you. Please consider sharing it with your network or leaving a comment on YouTube. That would be amazing. And we hope you guys like the show. It looks like our numbers are actually going up. And I don't think it's from me yeah. and Marcus listening to ourselves. I think we actually have <laughs> doesn't hurt. listeners. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't hurt. So you just got I, it on auto loop. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's right. Pretty much. I got like seven laptops in my living room, just like <laughs> cranking them through. That's every chance. I that's get. the new business we need yeah. to start. Is yeah, like, to get a bunch of burner phones seven playing podcasts. A day. That's my number right there. It's a slow and steady climb, but. All right. Pays off in the end. (laughs) That's right. Well, thank you again. We'll make sure to put all your links, your podcast links, your brand links. Everything will be in the comment in the description below on all the platforms, wherever you're getting this. So make sure you can connect with Diana and work with her company, Retail Voodoo, and maybe even go on her podcast, Gooder. She does a great job. It's a real honor to be on that show. So thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you guys on the flip side. (laughs) 